Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new expanded deck profile. Today we are going to be here talking about one of my favorite stall decks in the expanded format, basing around my favorite Pokemon of all time, Celebi, and this is specifically Celebi Prism Star. Not my favorite Celebi card ever, but it is quite a cool card still. And we're going to be building around the Time Distortion attack. Devolve any number of your bench Pokemon as many times as you like, and put each evolution card removed in this way into your hand. 90 HP is nice on this card though, though it is a Prism Star, so big warning. If Celebi goes bye-bye, so does this whole deck strategy, so we're going to have to keep Celebi safe while getting our strategy off. This concept is actually based on an original idea from the Sun and Moon to Lost Thunder format. I'm not the inventor of the expanded version of this deck, though this list is very tailored to my liking. Um, it, I'd probably show on screen right now if you want to see the original Sunlot concept. This is a built uh, list that someone else built that I have saved on my hard drive. Uh, and you would use Rhyperior to mill and Raichu to paralyze. We're doing similar things in this list. We're still playing the Raichu line. we got four Pikachu here. I played this one because it has a colorless nuzzle attack. So in an emergency, you can get a nuzzle off, potentially buy you a turn. And then it's played for the Raichu with the Evo Shock ability. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may leave your opponent's active Pokemon paralyzed. So you're going to do this every turn, and your opponent is never not going to be paralyzed, unless they are switching. Switching is bad. So we're going to get rid of items. How do we do that? Well, we're going to get rid of them with the Alolan Muck with Adventurous Appetite. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may look at the top six cards of your opponent's deck and discard any number of item cards you find there. So, obviously some expanded decks do run copies of Switch, we're going to want to get rid of those. Going to want to get rid of Versus Seekers and anything else that may get in the way of our strategy. We also play one co or two copies of Grimer. We play this Grimer because the one with the free collect attack to draw two. Um, in any deck that's not relying on searching out things like Psychic types, you always want to play this Grimer because it's got a good starting attack. And this is all fine and dandy, some quite cool stuff here. And to, to kind of play more into the control aspects of the deck, we play two Feebas right here. It's important you do actually want to play Feebas without an ability. I will talk about this in a, a minute. So we do play one without an ability, and then we play the Milotic here with Sparkling Ripples. When you evolve one of your Pokemon, you may put a disc card from your Discard Belt into your hand. You're going to use this to get back your Verse Seekers, your Counter Catchers, basically anything you need. Stadiums are especially quite good. Anything you need to piece together the combo. It also means we can play this deck without Loose Meme because we have Milotic every turn getting back cards we need. We also play one of the Milotic from Chilling Rain, or from not Chilling Rain, Evolving Skies. Just in case we're against a deck that's going to be heavily disrupting our hand constantly, we sometimes need our pieces because we're obviously putting these evolutions back into our hand with our attack. We need those pieces back so we can get the combo off again. So sometimes if your opponent is going to constantly be hand denying you, it may be apt to use the Dew Guard Milotic for a couple turns while you shut them down. So that is the Pokemon lineup. Obviously, Raichu is going to be paralyzing every turn. Muck is going to be milling items every turn and getting you ahead on the mill game. Milotic will make sure you never run out of the cards you want, and this one's to make sure you shuffle. And obviously with the as uh, aspect of Celebi, Time Distortion, we're going to be reusing this Shot Clock and this Adventurous Appetite over and over and over again while we establish Wincon. Jirachi is also here to search supporters out of the deck. We play Jirachi because we have Scoop Up Net in the deck, uh, so it's better than Lele, and it is level ball searchable, which is very nice. Do play four copies of Green's Exploration. You can only play it if you have no abilities in play. Remember what I said about the Feebas. Search your deck for up to two trainer cards. As you can see, all of our basics here have no abilities. You would not want to play versions of these basics that do have abilities. You want to make sure you do not have abilities. Despite the fact that there is a very good Feebas with an ability, you don't want to play it. The only thing that can potentially stop this is if you're not getting your attack off or if Milotic is in play. So you do have to be careful when playing the Dewguard Milotic that you don't lock your greens in an unfortunate time, but that can usually be avoided. Greens is very good, allows you to get any two trainer cards from your deck, allows you to just piece together the combos you need, get the stadiums you need to deny your opponent, check your prizes, all of the above. Three copies of N, we're going to want to put our opponent to a low hand size while we're milling their deck out. Um, very good card. Two copies of Gladion, look at your uh, face on prize cards, put one of them into your hand, then shuffle Gladion in. Um, so, I just play this because, uh, you know, I like getting my prizes. If you prize something like, I don't know, your main attacker, you want to be able to get that. You want to get these pieces out so you can be using, like, you want your two Raichus, guaranteed. I would not go without two Raichus. Um, and a lot of times you want your specific pieces, as well as there's a lot of one-ofs in this deck that can really help. Uh, so two copies is pretty good. 
one copy of Bridget, any deck that plays Lele or uh, Jirachi, either or, should probably play Bridget in it. Search a deck for one basic Pokemon hand or three basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench. Shuffle deck afterward. Since we play Jirachi, we play Bridget. Just allows us to get a really good early foundation. And like I said, because we can pick up the Jirachi out of play, we're never at risk of giving up two prizes with it. One copy of Faba. Choose a Pokemon tool, special energy, or stadium card attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon in play and put it into the Lost Zone very important against certain decks. If a deck plays a skateboard, for instance, that allows them to retreat out of paralysis, we want to be able to get rid of those. We have another way to help against that, but we're going to need Faba to get rid of all of those skateboards while we set up our win con. We have one copy of Misfortune Sisters. Look at the top five cards your opponent's deck, discard any number of item cards you find there, and their opponent shuffles the other cards back. Essentially a weaker version of the Muck. And while we are getting the Muck off every turn, the Misfortune Sisters is still important to increase our mill consistency. In addition, we have one copy of Handiwork, the worst card in Expanded that you have to play in every control deck just because it gives you a win con. Flip two coins for each head, discard two cards from the top of your opponent's deck. So, it's your way you win is just by milling them with this. Uh, one of the very cool things about this deck is that when you devolve all of your Pokemon in play, when you devolve all your Pokemon with the Celebi, you will start next turn with Greens being active because you will now have no abilities in play, which is very cool, and I do like that. Uh, four level ball. Search a deck for Pokemon with 90 HP or less. Obviously, all of our basics have less than 90 HP, so it's very good. It doesn't search the evolutions, but Evolution Incense does. I have two copies of that. The reason I don't want to play Quick Ball and Ultra Ball in this deck is because this deck is very, very, like, bits and pieces, and I don't really want to discard too many of them uh, early on until I get the Milotic going. Four copies of Trainer's Mail. Look at the top four cards of your deck, reveal a Trainer card you find there, and then put it into your hand. Shuffle the cards back. Uh, obviously, Trainer Mail, very good. Um, I just play it to give the deck general consistency. If you have something else you want to play in this spot, it's perfectly open. There's four free spots right there. You could go more Evo Incense. Uh, maybe you want to guarantee shore up some matchups by adding some more techs in there. Four Trainers Mill helps my deck go a little bit faster, though, and I like that. Uh, I've got four copies of Red Stretcher. Just in case things go wrong, put a Pokemon from Discovery into your hand or shuffle three from your Discovery into your deck. Uh, be warned that Celebi goes to the Lost Zone when it's KO'd. You cannot get that back. We have two copies of Scoop Up Net. You want to get Jirachi out of play. Occasionally, you may, uh, if you're unable to attack a Celebi every turn, if your opponent perhaps uses a like Flare Grunt on your energy in play, or a Faba, then you can go get a uh, Scoop Up Net and use it on a Raichu if need be. But mainly just for getting Jirachi out of play, but can be used for the rest of the Pokemon if need be. I would not play less than two, because you do want to have one every game, likely. We have two copies of Versus Seer. Put a supporter from your spell into your hand. Getting back any of these supporters is quite good. Faba and Misfortune Sisters are quite good, as well as Handiwork. Um, and because you have Milotic to infinitely reuse these Versus Seekers, realistically, you can play two and get away with it. One copy of Counter Catcher. You can only play this if your opponent has more prize cards than you, and switch one of your opponent's bench with their active. So gust up the perfect Pokemon to lock. Sometimes Pokemon can give you issues. Um, for instance, I'm trying to think. The first thing that comes to mind is Steelix Prime, but that's not legal and expanded. But a Pokemon with an ability that would prevent special conditions to it, maybe something like Blissey, if you don't have a Silent Lab and play a Blissey V, will prevent you from putting special conditions on it. So, uh, yeah, Countercatcher, kind of good in that case. You don't want to head into Blissey. Uh, one copy of Heavy Ball. Look at your face down prize cards. You reveal a basic Pokemon you find there, put it into your hand, and then put this Hisui and Heavy Ball in its place as a face down prize card. And, uh, this is another thing, just like Gladion, because you need that Celebi out of the prizes. Absolutely need the Celebi. And you're going to want, like, three Pikachus, and you're going to want, like, two Grimers and two Feebas. So, uh, Hisui and Heavy Ball is a great addition to the deck that came out recently, and it's definitely been helping out in a lot of games. One copy of Lily's Pokédoll. This can just ensure that we don't deck out if need be. Um, if you're having some trouble getting cards into your deck, you do have N to end your cards back into your deck from a big hand, which you can just repeatedly loop. My Lota can get a bigger and bigger hand with all your discarded cards. But if you're in, potentially in a pinch and you have already an energy on Celebi for the time distortion, you can attach a recycle, retreat into Lily's Pokédoll. Lily's Pokédoll, put it back into the deck, and then get your double card. Also, in the early game, can work as a sack to save your Pokemon, because uh, if you just have, like, maybe you just start Celebi and that's a little worrying, retreat the Celebi into Lily's Pokedoll, stall the turn, hopefully, and don't get your Celebi knocked out. Uh, vice versa with all of the other starters, though. Uh, Pikachu and Lil and Grimer are usually fine to start with. 
Uh, another thing I'll scoop up now, by the way, is good for. Lonely Grimer. Getting that out of the active. Can be good. One copy of Random Receiver. Do a card from the top of your deck until you reveal a supporter card. Put it into your hand. Shuffle the other cards back. Just a personal selection. I just want to be able to have an item out to getting a supporter at any point. It can be reused with my Lodic if I'm trying to dig for a supporter. I wouldn't really want to use Poke Gear across Transceiver because we don't play a lot of supporters in the deck. So, uh, you know, Random Receiver does pretty good. Uh, you could definitely swap this out, though, if you have something else you would prefer. Two copies of Rescue Scarf. If the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage, put that Pokemon into your hand. So, obviously, it doesn't count in damage counters, so be careful. But we're going to put this on our Celebi. That way, if it does, in the off chance, it gets knocked out, it does not go to the Lost Zone. We want to keep that Celebi in our play. So, and then you can get that back, obviously, with my Lodic. And then repeat the combo by putting the Rescue Scarf there. It's another reason why Lowland Muck is so important, as well as Miss Fortune Sisters, is you want to hit those Field Blowers early on. Field Blowers, Fabas, and the like, so you can keep your... Well, you can't hit Faba, but you're going to hit Verse Seeker for Faba. That's what we want to do. You want to keep those rescue charts in play. You need two, could even play three if you want, but two plays pretty fine. One copy of Tool Jammer. Uh, along with Faba, this is our counter to a tool that may get in the way. Things like Escape Board potentially could become a problem because your opponent can retreat out of paralysis. You don't always see Escape Board, but you do occasionally see it. Um, there's also just some other tools that could be helpful early on to shut off things that prevent all effects of your opponent's abilities done to them, uh, such as a, I believe, Stealthy Hood does that. Um, let me just make sure I'm not talking out of my tail here. Yes, prevent all effects of your opponent's abilities, and you want to be able to turn that off so you can get your Evo Shock off on an active Pokemon. Or, you know, counter catch to just round it, but you don't always have the option, so Tool Jammer gives you another option until you can get rid of it. Just a really good assist to have. We have one copy of Jubilife Village. If you have Beach, play Beach. I don't have Beach, so I can't play Beach. Once during each player's turn, that player may shuffle their hand into their deck and then draw five. If they do, their turn ends. Great for when you're just starting off. You really don't need it past like the first few turns, though, once you get this board established. It is not too hard to establish this board, especially with Bridget in the deck and uh, Jirachi. Even just turn one like Jirachi for Bridget into three basics, and then you're like one level ball away from having Celebi and the party started. Um, one copy of Sea of Nothingness. Special conditions are not removed when Pokemon evolve or devolve. One of the weaknesses that this deck comes into is the fact that a lot of Pokemon in Expanded are both V-Star or V-Max. There is obviously a lot of tag teams and big basic Vs like Dragonite and uh, stuff like that. But this deck can run into problems facing things like Arceus V-Star, Palkia V-Star, um, Shadow Rider V-Max. I don't think you beat Shadow Rider V-Max most of the time anyway, but you know, hypothetically... Uh, if you were in a matchup, Sunny of Nothingness does prevent the Pokemon from just evolving out of your paralysis and hitting your Celebi, so it's quite good to have one copy of it. does do pretty well in those matchups. You don't really want to play more just because you're not going to run into that often. Uh, one copy of Silent Lab. Each basic Pokemon has no ability. That includes like executes and stuff in this card pile, but mainly used to stop things that would potentially break your lock. Uh, consider things like Keldeo EX with its Russian or the... Uh, little bit newer, I say newer, from 2018, uh, Dawnwing's Necrozma with its invasion ability that would potentially get around your, uh, your paralysis lock, so we want to stop things like that. Um, there are obviously some things that you can't stop, you know, evolution abilities if you were to face uh, Zorark Breakthrough for some reason, that would definitely counter you, or if uh, you were to face Sogaleo GX, that actually is in play, but I have not seen those since they basically came out and expanded, so... Uh, <laughs> Don't want to rely on hitting those, essentially. One copy of Computer Search here. Discard two cards from your hand. Search a deck for a card. Um, I think it's just good to have to piece, to get the, piece together the combos. Uh, being searchable off of Trainer's Mail is very good. Um, it's just one extra piece. You can play a Dowsing Machine, but I don't think you need it because of my Lodic. You put Life Do, but you're not going to need it because you always want to have Rescue Scarf there. So Computer Search is pretty good. Two copies of Recycle Energy. Fright's colorless. If it's discarded from play, put it into your hand. So if your opponent tries to, like, Crushing Hammer it or, uh, you know, Flare Grunt it, they have to Faba this to get rid of it, so it's just pretty good. Also can be used to retreat into the Little Poke Doll, like I mentioned earlier, and to retreat out of, like, starting Pikachu, which is teleport down there for some reason, because uh, they've got a one retreat cost, or starting Feebas, which also has a one retreat cost. One copy of Grass Energy. This is a good round special energy locks that can happen early on. If you're facing something like a Shadow Rider Kelly Rex and they threaten the uh, turn one uh, Shadow Mist, you can get around that by attaching Grass Energy. It, it's not at all reliable, but having one copy, it's a control deck. You can make it work. And uh, it can't be lost owned by Faba, so repeated Faba uses will not prevent you uh, from winning the game because you can always 
get this back from the discard pile with stuff like my loading. So anyway, this covering one of my favorite decks to play and expand it, the Stall Celebi deck. Gonna paralyze, gonna mill, going to recover your own cards. It's a lot of fun. Um, Celebi is one of my favorite Pokemon after all, so getting to play a deck around Celebi which rarely really has good cards is a lot of fun. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other expanded deck profiles. I do them every single week. And I also do tabletop retro content. So check that out if you enjoy older games of Pokemon. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.